Pat with Pat's Two Cents with a warning. Couple About a week and a half ago, I had a very strange, perverted dream. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but it was dealing with the abominations that take place right in the church body, the body of Christ. What happened in this dream was there were four women and one man. Each woman represented holding a position in the church, serving the Lord. The man represented the leader of the church, preaching the word. Now, check this out. It gets freaky. So for those of you who are skittish, don't listen to the rest of this video. I'm going to tell you right now. It's very perverted. In this dream, there were four women. These four women all went to four different churches. I knew each one of them. And the weird thing was each one held a position. One taught, one uh, ministered to the kids, one uh, dealt with ministry and music as in praise and worship. Another one dealt with a form of authority. She had a position of authority in the church. These were pillars in their churches. And the minister that was in their midst was a short, unattractive, older man. And the sad part about this whole scene was every single one of them was sitting in a room, buck naked. Now, check it out. In this particular dream, they all went to the same church. So I knew what God was saying when I woke up was this was dealing with the worldwide universal church of God. This is not dealing with the, the Pentecostal versus the Baptist versus the, the Lutheran. No, this is the body of Christ. So let's take off our little banners and our little badges because it has nothing to do with your little private denomination. So get rid of the little self-righteousness as you hear this. What God was showing me, is this type of abomination is taking place worldwide throughout all of the denominations of the body of Christ, period. And what these women were getting ready to do was have an orgy. One woman was giving the man oral, and I won't say any more. Another woman was getting ready to do something else. And it was just like back to back, all these women were taking turns pleasing this man. They were all committing adultery. They were all committing lewdness. They were all committing harlotry. All together, the man and the woman. Now, the sad part is none of them were convicted. One person in the group was upset, saying, why are we doing this? We belong to God. Why would we even do this? This doesn't make sense. Doesn't this bother you? What was it about what we just did bothered you? And different women were bothered by each other, but nobody was bothered by the fact that they served God and that God would be displeased. None of them were bothered by the sin they were involved in. None of them were bothered by the abominable acts they were committing. Not at all, except the one who kept asking everybody, why are we doing this? This doesn't make sense. This is sinful. Now, now that I've shared that dream with you, if you can picture it, and all of these women were over 50, well over 50, and the man was obviously well over 60. So for your information, FYI, guess what? It's not just young people indulging and abominable, sexually lewd acts in the body of Christ. What God is showing me is it's everybody. And if I say it streetwise, everybody mm -hmm, doing everything. Listen to this. And I'm going to read the scriptures the Lord gave me. And I believe he is saying this to our church today, to, to, to God's people around the world. Please take heed. Ezekiel 44, starting at verse 6, And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice ye of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, 
uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 14. Now, this is for those of you who are in God's will and those of you who are not. For those of you who are walking according to God, be encouraged. Trust me, God's got something for you and it's good. So listen to what he says here. Ezekiel 14, starting at verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his faith, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him, and will destroy him from the midst of my people. Listen, you guys, let me add this real quick. Not all prophets are false prophets because they're doing it willingly. Some false prophets are false prophets because God is sick of them. And he's saying, I'm going to throw a lie through your mouth. Then I'm going to punish you for speaking it. This is deep right here. God is not playing. He's no play toy. You got to really pay attention because when God says time out, game over, case closed, you might as well bend over and kiss your behind goodbye. It's over for you. Verse 11. So we'll start at verse 10. I don't know where I am now. Okay, verse 10. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God saith the Lord God. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. That's good news for those of you who are living for Christ. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast, verse 16, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. 
Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence unto the land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job, is your name in that list? Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, verse 20, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noise and beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their way and their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, and concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when you shall see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. So let me break that one down real quick. In other words, when you look around and you see all that the, all that the people around you are doing, whether they're relative, friends, foe, whatever, and you see all the sins that are being committed daily, all day, year round, nonstop, you won't be so upset with the Lord when he brings judgment. But always remember what he said. If you fit in that group with Noah, Daniel, and Job, baby, you have no worries. God knows how to take care of who belongs to him. He knows who his people really are. He's not a play toy. He's not a chump. He's not a flunky. He's not blind, deaf, and crazy. He is smart. He knows what's up. He knows more than you will ever know. He knows more than the enemy thinks he knows. And he is not going to have the wool pull over his eyes. As he said in the New Testament, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Remember this. If you're sowing to God, you'll be, you will reap from God the blessings. If you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. Let me share this. Oh, thank you, Lord. I almost forgot this one. The Lord showed me this illustration. I was sharing it with one of, with one of our online church members over the phone a couple of weeks ago. He showed me leaves blowing in the wind. Leaves fall from the tree, right? And they're blowing. They're on the ground and the wind starts whipping and whipping and whipping and whipping. Now, the leaves that stay on the branch, they're safe. They're connected to the vine, the proverbial vine, which is the tree, which is Jesus Christ. Let's put it like that. Trees of righteousness, right? So now we got all these people on these branches connected to the vine. But the leaves that fall, they're on the ground. They're not connected anymore. But what happens to them? When the wind blows, they get whipped to the right, whipped to the left, whipped up, whipped down. They get beaten by the wind and they turn into little crumbs. Their little parts are being broken up. Every time they get beaten up, they bump up against each other. They bump all over. They're dragged around the ground and they're just slowly being torn apart and fragmented. Are they not? You've seen leaves blow in the wind. That's the way the lives will be of those people that are not connected to Christ in righteousness and in love. And I end there. I hope you take heed. God bless you.